A married couple, Maxwell and Sabrina Gilbert, were found shot to death in their home. The Gilberts were jewelers, and I thought that the motive for their murders was robbery. They had been shot, execution style. Both had been shot once in the back, near their hearts, and once again in the back of the head, with a 22 caliber rifle. After I got back to my office, I discovered an email that was anonymously sent to me from someone who called themselves Insmouth Citizen. Their email was posted from insmouth at gmail.com. The email contained links to three YouTube videos, and the sender said that they might be connected to the murders. The first video was recorded by someone who identified himself as a cousin of one of the victims. I found nothing unusual in that video. The second video was some creepy guy with a sleepy monotone voice narrating an H.P. Lovecraft poem called Despair. The username was also an allusion to Lovecraft. The Cthulhu is one of his more notable creations. Besides the audio, the words of the poem appeared on the screen. Some letters were capitalized, so I wrote those letters down. It was a message that read, Goodbye, I'll always love you, Sabrina. And that caught my attention. Was it true that Sabrina was having an affair? Could that have led to the murders? Something else I noted was that the person who sent me the email also seemed to have an affinity for H.P. Lovecraft. They identified themselves as Insmouth Citizen, and their email address was posted from insmouth at gmail.com. Innsmouth is a fictitious town in Lovecraft's work. I wondered if there might be a connection between the person who sent the email and the second YouTuber. But I know it was highly possible that it was a coincidence because there are plenty of Lovecraft fans out there. Then I watched the third video. It was on a channel called Brittany Covert is on the case. It was a channel that featured true crime stories. Brittany said she was a neighbor of the Gilberts. She had tried to talk to officers at the scene, but none of them told her anything. Her neighbors also knew nothing. She said she got everything she knew from the newspaper article. But I read that article. In Brittany's video, she mentions details about the murders that weren't in the article. For example, the article said that the killer got into the Gilbert's home when they cut a window panel and then let themselves in. The article did not indicate if the window panel was a part of a door or a window. Yet, Brittany said that the killer let him or herself in through a window. That could have just been a lucky guess, but that wasn't the only detail Brittany knew about the crime scene that wasn't in the news report. The article said that the Gilberts had been killed with a 22 caliber firearm. It didn't specify if the murder weapon was a handgun or a rifle. Yet Brittany said they were shot with a rifle. Once again, it just might have been a lucky guess. But Brittany also mentioned something oddly specific. She said that the Gilberts were shot in the back and the head, execution style. The article only indicated they were shot after being forced to their knees. How did she know they were shot in the back and the head? Were they lucky guesses? One lucky guess maybe, two guesses, it's possible. But three lucky guesses? <laughs> I don't believe in coincidences that big. I was able to determine Brittany Covert's real identity. She's 24-year-old Brittany Clark. She does, in fact, live across the road from the Gilberts. I asked Brittany to come in for questioning, and she agreed. I asked how she knew these things about the crime scene. She said, Lucky guesses. So, I responded, Really? Because I think, Lawyer! That you know so much. Lawyer! Because you killed the Gilberts. She then gave me an icy stare and said, <sighs> Lawyer. After that, Brittany didn't say anything else. I didn't have any physical evidence to link her to the double murder, so I had to let her go. I will continue to investigate Brittany, and hopefully one day I'll bring her to justice.